I want food that don't make me sick. I want walls that hold back the wind. I want a decent life. Edward Kenway, 1711. Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew, and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 53, and today we're going to take a look at the early years of the pirate-turned-assassin, Edward Kenway. Before we take a look at the life of Edward Kenway, I want to thank Jacko1893 on Instagram for the suggestion. Now, before we begin, we have to take a look at where Edward is found within the series. First appearing in the novel Assassin's Creed Forsaken, most of the information on Edward's life comes from the game Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag, where he is the main historical character and played by Matt Ryan, and from the novel Assassin's Creed Black Flag. He's also found in Assassin's Creed Memories and Assassin's Creed Reflections. While not appearing, Edward is also mentioned in Assassin's Creed III, Assassin's Creed Rogue, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Born Edward James Kenway on March 10, 1693 in Swansea, Wales, to Bernard and Lynette Kenway, the family moved to a sheep farm just outside of Bristol, England in 1703, when Edward was 10, and over the next few years, Edward gained a reputation of a well-known troublemaker. In 1711, Edward confronted three men at the Old Shillelagh, a pub located in Alveston, where they were encouraging a young woman to drink more than she could handle with less than honorable intentions. Confronting the men as they took the woman outside, Edward started a fight between the three men and himself. Caroline Scott arrived shortly after and intervened on Edward's behalf, causing the men to run off. When she introduced herself to Edward, she revealed the woman to be Rose, her family's servant. Smitten with Caroline, Edward asked if they could meet again. Caroline refused, stating that her father would not allow such a breach of social etiquette with her already promised to Matthew Haig, the son of Sir Aubrey Haig, an executive within the East India Company. Despite their difference in social status, Edward pursued Caroline, learning through Rose that she often visited Bristol's port on a weekly basis. In an attempt to gain her attention, Edward paid a boy named Albert to give Caroline a bouquet of flowers on his behalf. As Albert set off, Edward realized that Albert was a thief intending to steal Caroline's purse. Albert was successful in his theft, but he was noticed by Matthew Haig and Matthew's bodyguard, Wilson. Wilson caught the boy and beat him until Edward subdued Wilson and forced Albert to apologize to Caroline. Drawn to his fearless conduct, Caroline met with Edward that night outside of his home. During this midnight stroll, Caroline expressed that the thought of marrying Matthew and what society expected of her to do after the marriage made her sick. But at the same time, she knew that starting a relationship with Edward would incur the wrath of her father, a tea merchant named Emmett. Even with the threat of Emmett's wrath, the couple maintained a secret relationship and finally married in 1712. Emmett did disapprove of the marriage, disowning Caroline without providing her dowry. Without the wealth of the Scots, the couple settled on the Kenway farm, who quickly became fond of Caroline, and tried their best to acclimate her to a new life. Edward, dissatisfied with the life of a farmer and not able to offer a more privileged life to Caroline, frequently spent his nights in the taverns of the area. In late 1712, Emmett approached a drunk Edward and offered him a deal a large sum of money to send Caroline back to her parents. Edward passed out before he gave an answer, and Emmett took the opportunity to take Edward back to Caroline and show her the kind of husband that Edward was. Edward visited Emmett the next day and refused his offer, proposing another instead. Edward wanted to make a fortune as a privateer in the West Indies and promised not to return to England until he became rich. Emmett wanted the marriage to completely be at an end, leading Edward to point out that the odds were great that he would die while at sea, making Caroline a widow and able to marry again, and that Edward being gone also gave him time to try to turn Caroline against Edward. Emmett agreed, and when Edward announced his plan to leave England to her as a privateer, she left Kenway Farm, going back to her father's home, angry with Edward's choice. The night that Edward arrived to his assigned ship, the Emperor, Emmett sent Wilson and other men, including two of the three men that Edward fought that night he met Caroline, to set a fire to the Kenway farm 
while Edward's parents slept inside. Emmett gave this order to keep Caroline from going back to them during the time that Edward was gone. The Emperor's departure ended up being delayed, allowing Edward time to warn his parents and track the men who set the fire. Even though Edward saved his parents, his father disowned him, feeling that he brought nothing but trouble to his family. Edward, upset at this, sought revenge on the men that he knew took part. Finding the two men from the night he met Caroline, killing one, but before he could interrogate the other, he was killed by Wilson. While Edward tried to engage Wilson, he was a more experienced swordsman and was knocked out by Wilson and put on the Emperor, assuring him that as long as he respected his pact with Emmett, then no more harm would come to his parents. While on the Emperor, Edward was often harassed by the more experienced men on the ship, especially a man by the name of Blaney. At first, Blaney bullied Edward to assert his superiority, but Blaney grew to generally hate Edward for not fearing him. When the captain of the Emperor, Alexander Dalzell, foresaw the end of the War of the Spanish Secession, he announced plans to turn to piracy to the crew, offering those who didn't want to join him safe passage home. Before Edward could join others not wanting to be pirates, he was stopped by another sailor named Friday and saw that sailors who wanted to leave were being thrown overboard. On January 27, 1713, Edward participated in the Emperor's capture of the Amazon Galley, a British merchant ship. Edward was assigned to guard the ship's captain, Benjamin Pritchard, along with Blaney. Noticing that Pritchard wore a ring that matched the one worn by Wilson, Edward started asking questions that Pritchard would only answer in exchange for his safety. Unfortunately, Pritchard was shortly executed by Captain Dalzell. At the same time, the crew of the Sea Dog's Bite, captained by Edward Thatch, came to the rescue of the Amazon Galley. Seeing that they were outnumbered, Blaney decided to mutiny against the crew of the Emperor. Before he could kill Edward, though, Thatch took a liking to Edward, and instead proposed a brawl to decide who would join his crew, placing the two rivals against each other. Blaney was bigger than Edward, but Edward was faster, and while he did land several good hits on Blaney at first, Blaney soon got the upper hand and eventually drew a blade. With the drawing of the blade, breaking the rules of the brawl, Thatch shot Blaney dead. With Edward the victor, he joined the crew of the Sea Dog's Bite. While serving on the Sea Dog's Bite, Thatch taught Edward how to properly wield a sword and pistol. Edward remained in the area around Jamaica until the Peace of Utrecht started in April of 1713, effectively bringing an end to the War of the Spanish Secession, causing Edward to find himself out of work, as privateers were no longer needed or tolerated in the West Indies. This led Edward to piracy by joining the crew of the Jacobite, captain by Abel Brahma. In June 1715, the Jacobite attacked the HMS Intrigue, which ended up being too much for the brig to handle. With Brahma dead, Edward took the helm and did what he could to keep the ship afloat. While the Jacobite was eventually victorious because of the storm that was raging around them, the ship's magazine caught fire and exploded, sinking the Jacobite and stranding Edward in Cape Bonavista. The only other survivor, an assassin by the name of Duncan Walpole, was wounded by the shrapnel of the explosion and offered to pay Edward for passage to Havana. Agreeing with the condition of immediate payment, Edward advanced on Walpole, causing the assassin to pull his pistol. But when he pulled the trigger, the weapon misfired due to wet gunpowder. After a chase across the island, Edward killed Walpole after a brief fight. After looting Walpole's body, Edward found a letter from the governor in Havana, Loriano Torres, detailing Walpole's intended defection to the Templar Order. While Edward was oblivious to the true meanings of the letter, he put on Walpole's robes, but discarded his broken hidden blade, and collected a crystalline cube with the intention of delivering it all to Torres for payment. Before he could leave the island, Edward encountered a group of British soldiers harassing a merchant sailor by the name of Steed Bonnet. Believing that he was one of the pirates involved in the battle between the Jacobite and the HMS Intrigue, Edward killed the soldiers and then introduced himself to Steed using Walpole's name. Grateful for his help and both headed to Havana, Steed offered him a ride. When they got to Havana, they went to a local tavern to meet with Steed's contact, 
While there, Edward was recognized as a pirate by several men, provoking Edward into a fight. During the fight, several Spanish soldiers arrived, forcing Edward to flee. While Edward was able to get out of the tavern, Steed was not, and had his goods seized, including the package that was meant for the governor. Finding this out from Steed, Edward infiltrated the Castello di San Salvador de la Punta and recovered his package, though he could do nothing for Steed's goods. Before the meeting with Governor Torres the next day, Edward met Julian de Cass and Woods Rogers. Finding out that Rogers' wife had known Duncan Walpole, and that Ducasse collected the hidden blades of assassins that he had killed, gifting a pair to Edward, only asking that he showed them some techniques on how to use them. After successfully doing so, taking hints from what Rogers and Ducasse were saying, Torres arrived, and Edward gave him a set of maps and a crystalline cube. Torres went on to induct the three into the Templar Order, and started to lay down a plan to locate what was known as the Observatory. An Isu site with the capability to monitor every person in the world. The next day, the four met at the city docks to retrieve a man by the name of Bartholomew Roberts, because he was suspected of being a sage, the reincarnation of the Isu Aita, who knew the location of the observatory. On the way back to the governor's mansion, the group was ambushed by assassins, and while Roberts tried to escape, Edward captured him, leading to Torres giving Edward a thousand reales the pay intended for Duncan Walpole. Believing this reward was insufficient, Edward decided to discover the observatory's location himself and sell it to the highest bidder. Realizing this required the assistance of Roberts, Edward infiltrated the prison where he was located, only to find that he was gone, and the Templars were waiting for him. Knowing of his ruse, Torres had Edward imprisoned on a ship within the Spanish treasure fleet that was headed to Seville, Spain, with the intention to have him delivered to the British Templars for robbing them of Duncan Walpole. Managing to escape imprisonment on July 30th with the help of a man named Adewale, they recovered a number of other prisoners and stole the El Dorado. Making their escape through a hurricane that sank the rest of the treasure fleet, Edward ended up keeping the ship, deciding to name it the Jackdaw, and in a conversation with Adewale, named him the Jackdaw's quartermaster. Sailing to Nassau, the Jackdaw arrived in September 1715. Edward introduced Adewale to Edward Thatch, James Kidd, and Benjamin Hornigold. Edward started to plunder ships with Hornigold and take from plantations with Kidd. Near the end of the month, Thatch shared his concerns about protecting Nassau from recapture by the British, proposing a plan to take a Spanish galleon. Edward agreed, located and tailed the galleon to Great Inagua, learning that this ship belonged to Julian Ducasse. Not wanting Ducasse to spread word of Edward's escape, he snuck onto Ducasse's ship and assassinated him. In March of 1716, James Kidd explored the island with him and told Edward to keep the island as his base, requesting to meet him several weeks in Tulum, as he had more to show Edward there. When Edward reached Tulum, he found himself having to sneak through the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula because the area was guarded by assassins. Once Edward found Kidd, he was approached by Atabai, the leader of the assassins, who demanded to know why Edward sold their location to the Templars and why he helped the Templars in Havana. Edward answered that his only gain was money, but Kidd was able to defuse the situation by telling Atabai that Edward had the sense, or as others have called it, eagle vision. After claiming that he could recognize Bartholomew Roberts if he saw him again, Edward and Kidd entered a set of caverns and while exploring these caverns, Kidd explained the nature of the Assassin's Creed and of the Assassin Templar War. When the pair reached the center of the temple that lay within the caverns, they saw a sculpture that Edward claimed did not resemble Roberts at all. Though after solving a puzzle and removed the layers of the sculpture, Edward did admit that it resembled Roberts, and that it was the eyes that marked him. When they came out of the temple, the pair found that Talum was under attack by the Templars. Edward helped drive the Templars back, but after al Tabai told him that he was no longer welcome in Tulum, Edward then returned to Nassau and learned that Governor Torres was residing in a fort with a large amount of gold that Charles Vane intended to steal. Edward, though, beat him to it in January 1717, 
After taking the fort and finding out the governor's plans, Edward found out that Roberts was being held by a slaver known as Lawrence Prince. Edward threatened the governor to change his plans, putting him in charge, and when they arrived in Kingston on April 26th, Edward found that Kidd was also in pursuit of Prince with the intention to assassinate him. Kidd did end up agreeing to not assassinating Prince or Torres because the assassins were also looking for Roberts. After Edward and Kidd were discovered by Prince, allowing for everyone to escape, the pair met the next day to decide the best route to get Roberts. Because at this point, a kid revealed himself to actually be a woman. The two eventually made their way to Prince, and after Edward killed him, found that Roberts had his friend at gunpoint. Shooting an alarm bell, Roberts made his escape. The other two also escaped, and after regrouping, James revealed himself to actually be Mary Reed, and that if Edward said anything to anyone about it, she would unman him as well. With all the information available on Edward Kenway, I want to stop here and talk about the man that we've seen so far. At this point in Edward's life, he is brash and headstrong, caring for little but his own wants. We see this multiple times with his treatment of Steed Bonnet and his obsession of finding the observatory for no other reason than to sell it to the highest bidder. Even though he is a character that only cares for himself, he is highly charismatic. Friends with famous pirates of the time, Edward was a man who could make people gravitate to him, even though he was willing to make extreme threats, like telling Loreano Torres that he didn't really want to cut off his lips and feed them to him. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes, and if you love Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC. And you can find those links in the episode show notes. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.